Um, Aloha kako, um, mahalo to everyone who's pending live and watching for later. Um, please remember to enjoy the mele of West Maui by listening to Nahoku Hanohano nominated and winning musical albums Le Noho Hono o Piilani, Songs of West Maui, and Le Nahono o Piilani na Mele Ho, available on all digital platforms. The accompanying songbook is available from Kamehameha Publishing, and the song is a benefit for West Maui's Kayapuni Auxiliary, Auxiliary Organization, Naleo Kalele. Thank you and enjoy the talk this evening. Um, this series is co-sponsored by HK West Maui Community Fund, the University of Hawaii, Maui College Hawaiian Studies Department, and the Kui uh, Petition Hui. Uh, lectures occur monthly. Um, the series features a host of new and established scholars, also innovators, and their research and work on Hawaii and Hawaiian communities. We proudly present this to you via Zoom and live through each, um, HK West Maui's Facebook page tonight. Uh, tonight's presentation, Ea Equal Versity, Growing Educated 21st Century Kanaka. Uh, Dr. Kuka Hakalao is an educator, researcher, cultural practitioner, grassroots activist, songwriter, and expert in Hawaiian language. Uh, she is the first person in the world to earn a PhD in Indigenous education. Dr. Kakalao's research has resulted in an Indigenous research uh, methodology called Ma'avipono, as well as a pedagogy, uh, pedagogy of Aloha, which promotes the revitalization of Hawaiian language and culture, hands-on learning in the environment, uh, community sustainability, food sovereignty, and uh, Hawaiian self-determination in education and beyond. Uh, over the past 25 years, Dr. Kakalau has uh, founded and administered multiple innovative Hawaiian-focused programs, including a series of Hawaiian summer immersion programs, a Hawaiian academy, Hawaii's first culturally driven pre-K to 12 charter school, and an indigenous teacher licensing program. Her latest efforts center on developing AI Ecoversity, a Hawaiian-focused post-secondary program that transitions youth to culturally grounded, thriving adults and responsible global citizens able to walk comfortably in multiple worlds. Uh, give a virtual round of applause for tonight's speaker. Aloha nui, uh, Dr. Kukahakalao. Mahalo nui. Hi, aloha mai kako. I'm very happy to be here today. And I will start with a traditional ho'olauna and then we'll get right into talking a little bit more about air ecoversity. Aloe na umakua, Aloe na leo hava e. Aloe na kupuna, Aloe na makua, Aloe kalehulehu, Aloe. E ho mai kai ke mai luna mai o na me a huna no e o na me li e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai kai ke mai luna mai. O na me ahuna no e o na me li e hu mai e hu mai e hu mai e hu mai kai ke mai luna mai o na me ahuna no e o na me li. E hu mai, e hu mai, e hu mai. Ai kia manawa e hanu mai kāku i ka pono, ai hanu waku i nā mea pono ole. Makau kau, hanu mai nā mea pono, hanu waku i nā mea pono ole. Hano, hanu mai ka pono. Hanu waku ina mea pono ole. Ah, no. Hanu mai ka pono. 
paluaku ina mea pono ole. Aloha mai kako, ana ke kuhi nahi na kui kaha kai kaha kalau ko u inoa a o ke ia ku u mau mo opuna no ho laua ma kula ma maui a o honolulu ku u one hanau o Hawaii ku u moku puni o hama kua ku u moku o ku kui haile ku u ahu pua a o ai pio ku u avava o hi ilave ku u wailele o ku naka ku u aina o wailoa ku u kahawai O ka huewa ku u makani, a o ka waa waa hia ku u ua. Aloha mai kako. O ka mea mua, hau ole la o lono i ki awe awe aloha. Tana ho, o lala kako, hau ole la o lono i ki awe awe aloha. Ano, hau ole la o lono i ki awe awe aloha. All right. All of this was in Hawaiian, and I bet you most of you know exactly what happened, what I was saying, what I was doing, because all of us know so much more Hawaiian than we think we do. And so today I want to wish you how oli la, happy day of Lono Ikiave Ave Aloha. Lono Ikiave Ave Aloha was a Nakua, and his name can be translated as Lono with streaks of affection. And he's a lovemaking God, somebody that we call upon when we want someone to fall in love with us. He's also a God of mercy. And that word ave ave, which means sticky or adhesive, refers to his ability to make aloha stick to another person. So before we get started, I hope everybody is having a fabulous la olono iki ave ave aloha. The reason I greeted you with a traditional protocol is because that's my kuleana. I didn't just learn how to do these things so that I could uh, not use them, right? I learned whatever I, the ike I know so far so that I can pass it on and that I can inspire you guys and say, oh, if she can do that, I can do that. That's the whole point of practicing, right? And the more we see other people practice, the more we learn how to malama o kuleana, because our kupuna never learned nothing for learning's sake. Learning for learning's sake makes no sense to our ends at all. Because for us, when you learn something, there's a kuleana that comes with that. And so your kuleana tonight is going to be to please complete a short survey at the end of this event to let us know how we're doing and how we can improve. So again, never think of learning for learning's sake. Think of learning as a kuleana that you have automatically to that learning. And that kuleana is to apply that learning and to make it deeper. So today we're gonna to be talking about EA Ecoversity. EA stands for Education with Aloha. And what EA Ecoversity is, is a tuition-free, culture-based, higher education and career training program for young Hawaiians ages 15 to 30. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about this air ecoversity. What it's really ultimately about is to increase the chances of my own children, your own children and grandchildren, our Hawaiian OP, or in other words, to stay in their kula iwi, to stay in their onea now, to stay in a place where their ancestors have lived for thousands of years. Unfortunately, that is not a given, right? That our keikis remain in Hawaii. Currently, this is a uh, kahua kais, was a research um, report that came out from Kame Kamehameha schools last year, 2021. And it says that 83% of Hawaiians have no post-secondary degrees, which means that 50% half of Native Hawaiians with young children earn below the living wage. Because nowadays without a post-secondary credential, you're not gonna get a job where you can earn living wage. And so either you have to have lots of jobs or you're not gonna make it. So these half of our ohana with young children have to struggle every single month and have to cut out something that all of us would think is a basic right 
you know, that could be food, that could be uh, think clothing, you know, that could be uh, gas to get somewhere, whatever it is, they have to take that or health insurance or medication, right? Because they just can't make it um, from month to month. And so more Hawaiians are leaving Hawaii than any other ethnic group. And that's been going on for the last 15 years. And so today, if you're a young Hawaiian, let's say between 15 and 30, your chances of remaining in Hawaii is about 50-50. So if I have two daughters, chances are statistically, one of them is gonna move to the mainland and is gonna raise her cake over there and blah, 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 and the mo'opuna, et cetera. And hopefully, I pray every day that's not going to happen in my ohana, but statistically, it will happen to all of us, right? And so many of us already are living with that reality that our ohana are way across that ocean because they just cannot afford to live in Hawaii. And so we created AI Ecoversy. As I said already, AI stands for Education with Aloha, which is our way of teaching and learning. Not something we came up with, but something that our kupuna told us and our students told us uh, we needed to do, which was integrate aloha, social emotional learning, whatever you want to call it, into our education as the foundation of everything that we do. And then ecoversity is what we call a transformative learning space that's designed to cultivate human, cultural, and ecological flourishing. So the ecoversity has to do with ecological flourishing, and we call that aloha aina, malama aina in Hawaii. So we are part of this Ecoversity Alliance. There's about a hundred of us from around the world. We've been working together since we our first meeting in Portugal in 2015. And what we're doing is we reclaiming our indigenous knowledges uh, and relationships and imagination, and really designing new approaches to higher education. Um, so what this alliance is about is to radically reimagine higher education and really get away from these racist because certainly our school systems in Hawaii are racist. There's no doubt about it. There's no other way to put it. And this institutionalized racism is evident by data up the yin yang, as we would say. What it's also these ecoversity alliances are about is to reclaim our own processes of learning and unlearning, of knowledge, co-creation and community building. And for us Hawaiians, that is our Hawaiian way of teaching and learning. And also the idea that we really want to expand human consciousness and contribute to cultural and to ecologic regeneration. And so we we are this transformative action learning. So it's kind of something that is both ancient and that is modern at the same time. And that's something our research told us for over 35 years now, I've been teaching Hawaiian language and culture or and or Hawaiians of all ages. And the ultimate um, answer to all of our research is that ancient is modern and that aloha is the most important ingredient in Hawaiian education. And so we've created this AI University in an effort to grow educated 21st century Hawaiians. So after two years, when you get your diploma, it'll say you are, this diploma certifies you as an educated 21st century Hawaiian. It's a self-directed personalized journey, which means you have your own learning plan and that we will help you create. And then you follow that, that plan. That doesn't mean you work by yourself. You can work with lots of different individuals, organizations, groups, etc. cetera. Um, but it builds on what you want to do. It's what you're good at. It's what you love, what turns you on, what excites you. That's the learning plan that we're going to create is so that you can do what you really love to do as part of your job, rather than doing some job that you hate. So you can spend two days every weekend to do what you love. And we all know that there are a lot of people in that position, including our own people. So what we provide to these young people, young Hawaiians ages 15 to 30 is an authentic real world um, opportunities where they have to know what's happening in their community. So they have to understand local issues, but also the global context, text 
And whatever they study, whatever they learn has to actually make some impact on themselves, their ohana, the community, and the aina. Um, all of our learning is culture-based. And they have to understand that they have a kuleana, right? Not an option. It's not optional. As Hawaiians, we have a kuleana to revitalize and normalize our language and our culture. Wherever we're at, use all of that ike, move it forward, learn a couple more words, learn a couple more songs, learn a couple more chants, try and say something in a conversation when other people are talking, even if it's just, oh, I, oh, ah, oh, yeah, my kai, hey, you're part of that conversation, better than just standing there and saying nothing, you know, that's how you start talking Hawaiian. Um, also, at, because we know that aloha is the most important component of a successful Hawaiian education, but really any education, we make sure that everybody is treated with aloha and respect and that, and we are all ohana. So I am not Dr. Kahakalau. Thank you for that, you know, address. It, I do have a palapala that says I have a PhD. But I prefer to be anti coup because as anti coup, I can really tell you what I think about you. Dr. Kahakalo, I gotta be a little bit careful. I cannot be too direct, too personal. Anti coup can say anything she wants to say. And so that sense of ohana, and of course, with aloha, right? If, if you get scoldings with me, for me, it's with aloha. As some of our students um, used, to, used to say, you know, oh, I don't mind seeing anti coup when I used to be the principal of Kanoka Aina, because she scolds us with aloha. So the idea is really um, that this, what we are trying to grow are young people that understand how to work together and how to live a collaborative, reciprocal, akumai kind of a way of life, the way our kupuna did. And in order to make sure that they can also function in the 21st century world, and get in, in the economy and get the kind of jobs that will pay them living wages. We're also providing them with opportunities to earn micro credentials that then will help them get good jobs. Some of the basic foundations that everything that I do are, are built on come from the Olelo no Eau. If you're a Hawaiian and you don't have Olelo no Eau on your phone, I highly recommend you download it from the Bishop Museum Press. 20 bucks, best investment you ever made. I look at the Olelo no Eau every single day and I learn something every single day. So here's one of them. Waola loko ike aloha. Hanaho, waola loko ike aloha. One more time. Waola loko ike aloha. Well, we know ola, probably no loko. We definitely know aloha. The concept is love gives life within. So here, are these educators coming up with this whole social emotional theory, blah, blah. <laughs> Our kupuna knew that from way, way back. They knew that teaching and learning are reciprocal. And when they take place in an atmosphere of aloha where everyone is loved and everyone is cared for, then we can assure that everybody feels safe and everybody feels respected and everybody can learn. So one of the important things for us is, is that sharing of aloha among everybody involved at Ea University. Another one is Okapono Kehana Ia Iho Mainalani. Hanaho Okapono Kehana Ia Iho Mainalani. Okay, let's say it together. Okapono Kehana Ia Iho Mainalani. But she didn't know he was going to learn some Hawaiian language tonight. Ay, my kai. O kapono ke hana iya, iho mainalani. Do good until the heavens come down to you. The heavens not going to come down next week. We know that already. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing porno all the time. And so this learning at Air University is grounded and dedicated to our kuleana, to hana porno, and to malama kanaka, aina, and akua, just the way our kupuna did. Another olelo no eau, pu pu kahi i holomua. Hanaho, pu pu kahi i holomua. All right, and let's say one more time together. Pu pu kahi 
Iholomua, united we will progress. So the idea is that if we pull our strengths, there's this huge transforming potential that I believe can change this institutionalized racism that we're currently facing and the unjust structures, i.e. being part of the United States that we are currently a part of. Another Olelo Noyao that's a foundation for us is Ikeaku, Ikemai, Kokuaku, Kokua Mai, Pela Ihola Kanohona Ohana. Hanaho, Ikeaku, Ikemai. Kokuaku, Kokua Mai. Pela Ihola Kanohona Ohana. Kind of long, but we can do this. I know every single one of you knows how to read Hawaiian compared to Chinese or Japanese or Swahili or whatever, right? So already we're way ahead, right, of the game because we know how to read Hawaiian. Let's say it one more time all together. Ike aku, ike mai, koku aku, koku mai, pela ihola, kanohona ohana. And since we did so good, hano, one more time. Ike aku, ike mai, koku aku, koku mai, pela ihola, kanohona ohana. So we recognize, we know each other if we're ohana. We help each other because that's how ohana is supposed to act. And so for our students, what that means is they are part of their own ohana, but they're also part of the Lahui as an extended ohana and even the whole global learning community. And so if you're part of an ohana, you don't just kunani, stand there and look beautiful. No, you kokua aku, and in return, kokua mai happens. And so you, you give help and you will also receive help from your ohana. And so all of our learners are actively involved in their own families, but also in their local learning ohana, in the global learning community, particularly our AI Universities Network, and also other diverse social networks. Makahana ka ike, hanaho, makahana ka ike. Great, let's say it one more time. Makahana ka ike. Through work comes knowledge. In working, one learns, right? So our type of education is hands-on and the learners integrate doing and learning. That goes hand in hand. Doing and learning is the same thing. Learning and doing is the same thing. And as they do and as they learn, they explore and they discover solutions to real world problems. Problems in their ohana, in their community, in their um, their moku on their island in Hawaii, and that then we can go out, but we start at home in addressing the issues that our kikis are facing because this generation, this and the next generations, they're gonna suffer from all the stuff that the generations before them, and that was us and our parents and our grandparents and great grandparents, etc. Generations screwed up, right? the environmental catastrophes that are starting to happen because we did not aloha and malama da aina are gonna impact them and they're gonna to have to find the solutions. Let's not wait until it's too late. Let them look for solutions now already so we can mitigate and we de can decrease the impact that uh, the you know humanity has had on the globe so far, on the Honua so far, because there has been this attitude about, it's all about me, right? Kuli strive to reach your highest. That motto from all the way back from King Liloa to King Lot um, to um, Queen Kapiolani. So this is an Olena no Eau that has been used throughout the ages. And so for us, it's expecting you to reach your nu'u, not my nu'u, not somebody else's nu'u, but your nu'u, your highest potential, your highest level. And that's what we expect. Nothing less, but nothing more either. You know, as far as you can go, we want you to push yourself to get there, even if it takes time, right? Nothing great happens overnight, takes some time, but we want you to know where you want to go and then start moving and progress towards that nu'u, your personal nu'u. And so each learner has a unique personalized learning plan that allows them 
to reach their highest level on all in all kinds of ways, right? That can be as a Hawaiian language speaker, as a Hawaiian practitioner, as a chanter, whatever they are in whatever they want to be, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a teacher, as a lawyer, whatever it is, as a construction worker, whatever, it doesn't matter what the career is, but we want our OPO to reach their nu'u and work towards excellence also in at least one cultural practice. So, you know, this jack of all trades, that's not really the Hawaiian way, even though lots of our people are really good at a lot of things. But the idea has always been to get to a lawyer, right? To get it to a kumu, to an expert level. And in order to get there, you got to go deep, right? And so what we expect them to do is to really stick with one cultural practice and really go deep and, and become as good as they can possibly be in that practice. And so we offer micro-credentials in four different areas, Hawaiian language and culture, career exploration and training, um, 21st century life skills and health skills, um, Aloha Aina, which focuses primarily on environmental stewardship and sustainability practice. And once you get back, first you can get micro-credentials in all of these areas by taking courses, by uh, create, doing, participating in projects, designing uh, projects, um, working with mentors, uh, doing internships, creating portfolios. So there's a lots of different ways that you can earn these micro-credentials. Um, and they're based, um, and as you create your learning plan, you kind of uh, match what you want to do and what kind of micro-credential you can get in those areas. Now, these micro-credentials, so this idea of micro-credentialing is relatively new. And you know us in Hawaii, we always tend to be day late, dollar short, right? Typically, again, that's the situation. Micro-credentials have been around for a while. Um, in the certainly in the tech industry, but also in higher education. I heard about them the first time when I was in Switzerland in 2017. But right now, if you went to, a, to the a Harvard website, for example, the College of Business, they, there you can earn all kinds of micro-credentials. You got to pay the big bucks, obviously, but that's what you do. You earn the micro-credentials and Harvard and their image and their status stands behind those credentials. Well, we had to find somebody that would stand behind these micro-credentials. And so we put together this incredible boards of Hawaiian practitioner and industry experts in Aloha Aina, in Kumupa'a, in Mahi, and in Olapono. And they are the ones who are developing and are standing behind these micro-credentials. And then we also have our Ahakako that helps me and supports me and advises me um, and, and helps us figure out, you know, what's next and what direction to go. All the learners have to have an e-portfolio and that's where your digital badges and your other micro-credentials are um, posted and where employers can look at what you um, have achieved and they can then ask you questions about it. When we first talked talked about this micro-credentialing because people in Hawaii were not ma to it. They said, oh, we don't know, man. You know, everybody wants to see a college degree. I don't know about these digital portfolios and micro-credentials. So we worked with a group of uh, doctoral students in the College of Education at UH Manoa, and they went to employers and they asked them, if, if a young Hawaiian comes and they don't have a college degree, but they have this portfolio, and it says in there they can do X, Y, and Z. They know how to do pH testing, water, kind of salinity, all those kind of things. They know how to use a chainsaw. They know how to do GPS. They know how to do whatever it was. Yeah. Um, they know how to fly a drone. They know how to, you know, uh, the code on a computer, whatever that, that case may be. Would you hire them? And they said, well, we certainly would want to talk to them. And especially in the private and public sector, I mean, a private and nonprofit sector, not so much in the public because the federal government says you need a bachelor's, you need a bachelor's. But in the private business and in a nonprofit world, they said we would much rather have somebody that comes with an electronic portfolio and has specific skills that we can that are validated in that portfolio 
and that can speak to what it is that they know and has experience working in our communities than somebody who comes with some pala pala from somewhere else that says they know whatever it is. So when it comes to kumupa'a, we want everybody to make sure that they get at least to a level three or higher on our analo olelo, which is a Hawaiian language proficiency scale. In addition, as I mentioned, they have to do a two-year cultural mentorship. So it could be like, for example, if they're already in a halal, they can just continue to work with that kumu for an additional two years, but with a specific goal of, you know, getting a little bit deeper or learning a little bit more about maybe a certain uh, instrument or a certain uh, hula tradition or a certain um, type of chant or whatever it is, that's something to work that's worked out between the, that uh, kumo, that lawyer, that expert, our culture expert, and the students. But what we want is that during that two years while they're with us, that they increase their practice in, let's say, hula. If they're, if they're not connected to anything, then we will help them to find somebody that they can then study with. And while we all know, you know, like let's use hula again, you know, that two years is nothing. <laughs> and when it comes to hula and most other Hawaiian practices for that matter as well, but at least it's a start. And hopefully the idea for us is that they continue to study whether it's la'au lapa'au or whether it's canoe paddling or whether it's fishing, or, doesn't matter what it is, but some kind of lua, you know, whatever it is, a cultural practice, olelo hawaii, chanting, whatever it is, um, that they start at least if they haven't started yet. And the good news is that many of our young people are already part of all kinds of different cultural practices within their community. And so really the hope is that we can take them wherever they are and then intentionally put them through the next two years of really getting deeper into that area that they already were interested in. And then we're offering free AI e-learning courses, both for the learner and their ohana. So um, we charge everybody else for those courses, but our AI e-learners and their ohana get to take those classes free. And, we, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about those kind of classes. So this Ana Olelo that I developed a couple of years ago, it's a Hawaiian language proficiency and we want them to be at least at a level three. That means roughly about 800 words, at least 40 proverbs and songs and 20 chants, um, just as one part um, in terms of, you know, some basics. It's also that they, are, that they know at least 20 more Olelo, 20, um, about just kahiko, any kind, 20 mo'olelo that are specific about our ali'i and 20 that are about our me'e or our hero, or heroes. And then they have to know simple conversations. So that, there's a lot more to this scale than what I'm showing you, but at least you, I hope you get the idea of what we expect them. Now, if they already know that, they can just test out of that. And then we'll tell them, oh, if you're already a level three, okay, we like you go to four, right? So it's always kulia ikanu. And then they have to do a hoike at the end for all of these categories. So in other words, they have to then tell that mo'olelo, maka olelo hawaii, for example. Um, they also have to know about protocol, right? Um, minimum is um, that they know 20 or more chants, oops, kalamai, that they uh, engage in protocol, right? It's not only about, um, Knowing it, if you don't do it, it doesn't count, and that it happens frequently. Um, that they understand what they're actually chanting and praying and can participate when people like today, I didn't ask you to participate because you should already know that automatically, right? So if I do a homai to center myself and to center all of us, I would have assumed that you already knew that when I'm doing Ehoma, you do it along with me, right? Because we're at that level now. We're, we're normalizing all of this stuff, right? And so in this case too, participating in chants like Ehoma, that should be a no brainer. In addition um, to just knowing protocol, it's really about engaging in that protocol, right? And so when you enter the forest, you know you have to kahia. 
when you gather greenery or food, you kahea. Before you eat, you pull it. Before you hula, you pull it. Before you surf, you pull it. Before your meetings, you pull it. All of this a way of life. Um, and and our Haumana, we wanted to understand that, that that's what being an educated 21st century Hawaiian is all about. Um, we invite you to do your Aloha Aina projects in your community, but if you don't have a place, we invite you to come to Waipio Valley, Kapapalo Iokeali Iko Aina. You see Hilave there, we have a little five acre um, Aina that we take care of, and you can earn your uh, Aloha Aina badge there um, if you have no other place, but we really hope that you complete your Aloha Aina things in your community. And so in addition to practicing Aloha Aina, you'll have some Aloha Aina courses where you learn about the Aloha Aina movement 19th, 20th and 21st century and unlearn some of the blankety blank lies that were told to you <laughs> in your history classes. And we're gonna be talking about, you know, how are we gonna be addressing these dimensions of oppression, of privilege, of power, you know, when it comes to Hawaiian decolonization, et cetera. And then at the end, they have to do a, a ho'ike of the Aloha Aina movements to an authentic audience, means educating their community, their ohana, somebody, another Hawaiian on Zoom nowadays, they can do it on Zoom, um, they can do it on Facebook Live, they can do it in person, but educate others about what you have learned. That's that kuleana to the ike, they immediately have to apply that ike and pass on that ike. And then they have to do a regenerative project where they work in the community on an aloha aina issue or an aloha aina project and learn from their place and really get to know their place through kilo and through other experiential learning strategies. And so then um, they also have to learn how to grow their own food. So they grow, harvest, catch, prepare, well, however they're going to get their own food. If they're hunters, they can do hunting. If they're fishermen, they can eat fishing. If they're gatherers, they can gather. If they want to grow food, they can grow food. But they have to prepare a healthy meal. Um, and they have to do it in a bilingual Kanaka kitchen format. So if you're interested in how that works, um, on March 2nd, we're doing a Kalo pipikini, a taro corned beef hash, um, the same way that our students will be doing their presentations. It's going to be on, um, on, if you go to Kua Kanaka Facebook or Instagram, you'll, you'll learn about the, um, you'll be able to register for this event, or here's uh, down on the bottom, kuakanaka.tovudi.io events slash page kind of long is the registration there. And I think that the um, QR code should work too. Um, so then for Mahi, when it comes to career and exploration, again, we have e learning courses, they create a career plan, they have their e-portfolio, and we want them to do a six month paid internship in a career of their choice. So that's been our hardest part. And we just recently went to, um, uh, to the federal government and we're putting in an appropriation request so that we can get funding for these young Hawaiians to work full time at a wage, 20 bucks an hour, that will actually allow them to live, right? And um, we're hoping that we get support from the, the Labor, Health and Human Services, Education and Related Agencies Committee um, but we're also asking private and, and um, businesses and nonprofits if they can support a intern for a six month period uh, through a donation to the nonprofit. And then that way they will be uh, saving some tax money. Um, so here is what one of our Kanaka entrepreneurship is really important. Right now I live on Hawaii Island. Almost 30% of the population is Hawaiian, 6% are the entrepreneurs. Only 6% entre of entrepreneurs on Hawaii Island are Native Hawaiians. And so it's really important that we uh, learn, teach our OPO how to start their own businesses. And so this is one of the classes that we teach for our AI University students for free and others 
for, for money, <laughs> uh, which is uh, an introduction to Kanaka entrepreneurship. And this was our class not too long ago. And then we have Olapono, our 21st century health and life skills. And again, we have courses. They all have to create a finance and life plan, and they have to complete the healthy living project. Here are some of our partners, and we have many more, but I couldn't fit them on a page. And this is how it has worked so far. So I left um, Kanuka Aina Charter School in 2010 because I've been working on a system of Hawaiian education that was culturally driven, family oriented, and community based. And while we were able to achieve that, ultimately we failed because we were not sustainable. And because we were dependent on the state and on other sources of funding, we never could really do what we wanted to do. And so I said, forget this. And we started Kua Kanaka, a native Hawaiian owned and operated social enterprise in 2017. And we've been providing culture-based products and services, including consulting services. We have this card game called Cards for 808. Some of you might be familiar with, we do these Kanaka kitchens where you learn how to cook in Hawaiian. You know, we have, we have um, down our Kapapaloi, you can come down there with your class and we'll teach you about, you know, Loi and Malama Aina, et cetera. And so all of our, cult, our products are culture-based <coughs> and our services be, and that's because we believe when we hook up Kanaka, again, with our native ways, then they will be better off. And when Kanaka thrive, everybody benefits. So that's our, our tagline for Kua Kanaka. So for the last um, maybe five years now, we have been fully supporting AI Ecoversity in terms of you know, um, finding money for an, an AI Ecoversity administrator, et cetera. But uh, things are moving forward so quickly that we decided in 2022, we're gonna make a nonprofit that is still as independent, financially independent as possible, but at least it, being a nonprofit would allow us to fundraise and get grants. And also when these intern, these businesses tell us they want an intern, they can donate then to us um, that money and then we can send the intern and that will also help them to, um, to with tax write-offs. So just a little, uh, in almost in closing, little review of the timeline. We started with a, in, in 2015 when we attended the first Ecoversity gathering in Portugal, and we've been at every global gathering since. In 2017, we had our design team start to meet. And then in 2020, we did a soft launch because there was money COVID related work development funds that we wanted our um, our students to um, benefit from. We also started to put our advisory board together and have regular meetings. And then in 2021, we launched this AI e-learning um, where we provide these different cultural based courses right now on, on, a, um, on our AI e-learning platform. And then this, this year we, we wanna get nonprofit status and launch a design of Ipuka Ea uh, with the goal to be self-sustaining by 2026. Um, so what is Ipuka Ea now? Jeez, all these words. It's a culture-based um, e-learning system that includes a learning exploration platform that's culture-based and highly interactive, a learner management system that helps us track the learners and help them store all their data and a micro-credentialing network that basically make sure that um, the micro-credentials that these students are receiving are of high quality and are trusted by the community. The reason we need to create Ipuka Ea is because right now, if you go online, everything is from a Haole perspective. And Haole is not a bad word. As you can tell, I'm my mom is pure German, so I have no issues with Haole at all. But that mindset is not our mindset as Hawaiians. We don't think linear and sequential go A, B, C plus. That is so boring for us. Um, and so what we want is we wanna create a system that's created an online system that's created 
from an indigenous worldview. Um, earlier on, um, I was introduced as the first person in the world to get a PhD in indigenous education. Well, when I went to that college in 1996 and I told them I wanted to get a degree in indigenous education, they told me, oh, there is no such thing. I said, hey, I'm indigenous, I'm an educator, hello. They said, no, nobody has ever gotten a PhD in indigenous education, so it doesn't exist. So I said, well, what do we need to do? So they said, well, you have to qualify it as a field. So when everybody else started their PhD work, I had to write a paper that the dean had to approve that indigenous education in fact existed. Today, Shaminar has one, UH Manoa has one, everybody has an indigenous education program these days. And it's, it's everybody's model to that. But when it comes to online, we're right back to the same thing. There is no such thing as an indigenous learning management system. Hello, we need something that comes, that works for us that's intuitive, that's creative, that's artistic and emotional, and that really focuses not just on me, 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 stepping on everybody to get to the top, but me helping everybody to get there together. And so we are currently looking for software programmers, game designers, UI designers, and graphic designers. And if you know anybody, please send them my way. I will have my... Um, at my contact information at the end of this presentation, which is almost all. <laughs> so these AI e-learning courses are helping us already to become sustainable. So we sell these courses to organizations. Uh, right now we have Kamamiya Schools, we have Partners in Development, we have the Papakulia Community Development Corporation, we have Kaehu and Maui. Um, so they're all buying our courses for their employees. We have schools, um, right now, actually, we're working with all these DOE teachers, um, and we have families and individuals that sign up, and they pay for these courses. And because they pay, we can give these courses free to our AI University learners at the Ohana and anybody else who applies for a scholarship. So if you cannot afford it, you just call up Etiku or you email me, and you will get a scholarship, because that's what it's all about. We're going to poo poo kahi i holomunga collectively move forward. So right now we need at least 100,000 to start this coding of this um, Ipuka Ea. And we've already raised over 55,000. We started in October of last year, 2021. And by the, uh, as we entered 2022, we already have $55,000. And so we're, we're halfway there. And we know that this is gonna work because it ultimately, you know, we're trying to do the best we can and creating win, win, win outcomes, you know, where our youth and our young adults win, where our Ohana win, our communities, our Lahui. And as I said earlier, when Native thrive, everybody benefits all of our aid. In addition, we're helping our language, our culture, and our traditions thrive. With we're taking care of the Aina and we're stimulating the economy, right? That's also something that we're doing, which is really important. So if you wanna make a donation tonight, Mahila Hila, there's the QR code, you can. If not, it's all right. Uh, we've been very, very blessed and we will continue to be blessed. But if you know some rich person who has way too much, please let them know that we could use the cocoa and that it will be well, well invested. And the outcomes will be incredible as we help our young people to kulia kanu. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, my presentation does come with a kuleana. The IKEA share does come with a kuleana. So if you could please, please, please um, share your mana'o with us um, uh, in terms of how you like this and how we can improve our presentations. We would really appreciate it. And so I'm gonna do my closing um, and then give you my contact information, but we still have time for questions and answers. Mahaloena umakua, Mahaloena kua, Mahaloe.
Mahalo nui. Oh, forgot to say, if you're interested in more of um, the things that we provide at Kokanaka, we have also these free Mo'olelo Kahiko that are sponsored by the Papakolea Community Development Corporation. Happens every third Wednesday of the month, which just so happened to be this Wednesday. It's from six to seven. And again, you can uh, register there or go to our Kuakanaka Facebook or Instagram, where all of our things are offered, along with ways on how to learn how to speak Hawaiian, uh, and all kinds of other fun things, activities for the entire Ohana. And then if you if I can kokua you in any way, if you're interested in AI University, um, contact us and let us know. Um, also, if you fill out the survey, and I'm hoping that I can put it into to the chat right after this also, um, then we can contact you. And in there it says, if you're interested in AI University, um, to put your email there. All right. Mahalo nui. And so, um, Bianca, if you, if there are any questions, I will be, oops, here, I will be happy to answer them. <laughs> Mahalo, Antiku. And yeah, um, so this will be on Facebook. I can post the QR code there, maybe if you give me a link or if you want to later yeah. on, we can post it there. Um, so a lot of people watching, so please post your questions in there. I have a few that came through other methods. Um, you said your students, your students' work have to result in impacts to their community. So what are the impacts, some of the impacts that you've seen or what, what have they done? Well, we are a very new program. So we just launched, right? Um, so, um, well, I, I'll give you one example. Um, that, that land that you see down in YPO was completely overgrown, 40 years uh, of, of overgrowth. And in YPO, I mean, you turn around and the grass goes. I mean, it, it, you know, so these were huge trees that completely overgrown. Um, and the interns basically cleared the land. They fenced the entire five acre property so that we can actually grow food there now. So that was an in impact on the community because the community benefits from this color that's grown there. Um, we share it, you know, with people. Um, the other day, uh, a group went to Kaholawe for the closing of the Makahiki. So they came and they said, oh, we need some Hawaiian kalo to take with us as ho'opupu. And also they, they know we have a spring on our property. We also need some vai from Waipio. So, so then this is, that's a contribution to the community, to the Lahui, when we can send ho'opupu to Kaholawe for it, just as an example, right? Um, others, they did um, um, digital, uh, they worked on something that helped somebody, a uh, community organization set up a website um, and and because of the stuff that they had learned, um, somebody else were working on an app to learn Hawaiian pronouns. And then once that's available, then people can can try to learn Hawaiian pronouns, which are kind of complicated because they're different from Hawaiian. So that's just some examples. Oh yeah, it's super exciting. Yeah, sorry, I didn't um, realize how how new the yeah, ecoversity was. Um, yes. And so this other question is um, this, uh, an observation perhaps, but then also questions for you, because a lot of people holding PhDs, they tend to go towards research and teaching positions at universities. So what called you away from those kinds of normalized expectations? Oh, I, I got some flat when I left the university. <laughs> you're going to my field to have your babies in the tarot beds and you're going to forget all about la 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 la. Well, that didn't happen. but. The thing is, um, I have always been very close to the Aina. I was kind of born and raised on the Aina. I love to be outside. If I have the option indoor, outdoor, I will be outdoor all the time. I could, I could live outdoors. You know, I'd be just perfectly fine with that. So, a, it was that part and the hands-on. I love to learn hands-on. I'm not. I I can do the other part, but it's just to prove that it can, that I can do it. It's not because I like it. <laughs> you know, um, I don't like to write. <laughs> I mean, I I love talking, as you can tell, but I don't like writing. So if I rather talk, then I should be in a job where I can talk rather than have have to write and have to publish. I've published, you know, it's not. But that's just all saying. You want me to do that? Uh, just for that, I'm gonna do it. And when I see that there's a good reason for it. So academia for me is also a racist institutional institution. 
you know, and um, we don't feel comfortable there, to be perfectly honest. In general, we had to be, when I, I was at U.S. Mano for you know, a good decade, and we, we this was during Haulani Trash time, and we just started the Center for Hawaiian Studies, and we were involved in, you know, beefs in one, one way or another situation all the time, you know. Uh, and so to me, it's been a blessing. Um, it, it was a divine guidance, really, is uh, how my whole life has been. And Akua allowed me to come and move to from Waianae to Hawaii Island in 91 and raise my, my kids in YPO. So it, and now my grandchildren, they're coming on Friday from Maui and I'm super excited. But yeah, it, it's been divine guidance more than anything else. Plus, I am more of a Kua Aina by nature, you know, and by, by, by interest and by passion and by preference kind of thing. Um, and so one more question, um, at least one at least. Um, so do you see a role for AO Ecoversity curricula to get integrated into like regular public school DOE curriculum or implemented in like specific charter school? Um, like is, or do you see it like best as like a standalone um, thing that you're, that you're doing through your own programming? No, the type of education that we are practicing is called education with aloha or pedagogy of aloha or Hawaiian culture-based education or Aina-based education or Ea education or however you pronounce that. It, it's something that is already happening. So that's not uh, you know, um, in any way something that uh, we're the only ones. We, we were certainly on the forefront in terms of making it happen, in terms of, um, you know, uh, how should I say, uh, experimenting and proving that Hawaiian education can be academically rigorous. Because that was when I first started as a teacher, the idea was, oh yeah, yeah, if you're so stupid and you cannot handle in a regular classroom, we have a wonderful Hawaiian program for you, you know? And, but it was always, whenever it was Hawaiian, it was less than. And so for since 85, when I started as a teacher, I have been trying to prove that Hawaiian education can be and should be and is also academically rigorous, but also culturally rigorous, right? Its traditional standards are high. Those were the standards set by our kupuna and our modern standards are also high. And so anybody can implement project-based, place-based, um, social emotional uh, learning anywhere in any form no matter if you're dealing with preschoolers, K-12, university, you everybody can implement. And I can talk about pedagogy of Aloha. That's a whole nother story. Maybe another time, you know, and you can read about what I wrote about it in all kinds of places too. But that kind of learning is preferred by Native Hawaiians. We know that. It's actually preferred by most people uh, because it's not boring and it's fun, right? It's... Uh, exciting, it's real world, it's relevant, it makes sense, right? So that kind of education, no matter who you are, and including a mother who teaches her own children at home, you can apply and you can practice that kind of education. And I put that, the, uh, Maya, the, the link inside the um, chat I don't know if that helps because nobody's in the chat. Oh yeah, right? well I know it's just us, but I put it on the um, the Facebook, so hopefully okay. all the people watching can um, can just uh, click in the comments, and I'll pin that yeah. there. Um, and yeah, I just want to close also by saying, like, I mean, all the skills that you are teaching in your um, through the pedagogy of Aloha and AI diversity, I can think of a lot of jobs, and I would love to talk to you more about the kind of things that we need people to do and um, hopefully your students one day will be able to help with that. Um, and so any closing thoughts? Yes, we've come a long ways. You know, that's, that, that's an exciting piece. As I said, when I first started, everything that was associated with Hawaiian and education was remedial. Nobody is questioning anymore that children that learn in the tarot patch from the tarot patch can reach the highest level and become PhD, you know, if, if that's what they want kind of thing. Um, there is still issues definitely, you know, that we have to work on normalizing our language and culture, you know, that's something, an ongoing process that's also continuing. 
So I think as, as we are moving forward as Hawaiians, we should be thankful and we should be excited and we should celebrate that we're moving in the right direction. You know, we have long, long ways to go to be where I would like to be, which is to have an independent Hawaiian system of education, which is our right as an indigenous people, according to the UN declaration. You know, um, there's, it's not a, a, a question, it's a right to have our own system and we're working towards that. And if you wanna help in any way, please again, feel free to contact me at ku at kuokanaka.com. Um, and I would love to have you come on board and help us as we're slowly getting off the Titanic and building our own va'a again. And I'd encourage you to uh, look at the Facebook post later. There's a lot of very kind comments uh, that were really questions, so I didn't repeat them. But, uh -huh. but thank you so much for coming. Good luck with everything, and mahalo. Good night. Mahalo nui, Bianca, for inviting me and whoever else did. Um, all the best, and if I can be of service, please let us know. Mahalo nui, ahui ho, ahau olila olono, ikiawe aloha. <laughs>